So many moons ago, people wrote on paper. Mm -hmm. Then somebody created a typewriter. Mm -hmm. And a typewriter, when you finished a line, you had to do two things. You had to press, uh, you have to rotate it up so you go to a new line, and then you have to move the carriage back. Yeah, yeah. So backslash N is new line, and backslash R stands for return. So basically typewriters had two actions which were necessary to make a new line. Backslash R and backslash N. Now, at a later point in our technological evolution, somebody created a teletype and they made it backwards compatible with typewriters. So the teletype had two characters, backslash R, backslash N, just in case. Now, then people began building computers and computers had to be backwards compatible with teletypes. So that's why to this day we have... Back, she's not needed, backslash R is not needed for the computer. You just do black backslash N and it's done, right? Right, but like I told you previously, the correct answer is it depends. For example, on Linux, it is enough to write just backslash N. On Windows, you have to write backslash R backslash N. And on some flavors of Macs, you write just backslash R. So it's a little trick. You have to keep it in mind. It's there. So I gave them uh, this space followed by the path followed by this marker and then on every other line i can give them additional details for example i can indicate such a thing as user agent followed by a column followed by who i am for example opera 10.3 running on windows 64 bit. Hello? Um, so now you can see how people build statistics about the internet. For example, where do they know from that Internet Explorer has 50% of market share? And how do they know that uh, in the past few years, Chrome's share got things. bigger. Yeah, they know it because every time I send a request, I indicate it in my request. Yeah. What I want to know is, uh, this is done by the, the browser, right? Yeah. By default, so the user doesn't have anything to do with it. He yes. just sends yeah. the... Some browsers have you have the option to let you change the user agent string. So, for example, even though I am Opera, I can pretend that I am Internet Explorer 3 running on Windows 95. <laughs> because all it changes is just a string that I write when I connect uh, to the server. As simple as that. I can even make up completely unexisting versions of operating systems or browsers. I can, for example, write here Alexandru. It's a browser which somebody invented in my name. Nobody enforces that. So the protocol, if you read the rules, it says something like, uh, you should honestly declare who you are. But there is no authority, no, no universe police, uh, which watches every connection and makes sure that this information is honest. Um, so what, yeah, so it, what does it matter if you change it or not? Does it just not? Well, it makes certain. It has a certain impact on how things go. For example, if I am the server, well, if I am the recipient of this request, I can have my site designed in such a way that if you're from, if you're coming from Windows, I give you a download link for the Windows version of my program. But if you're coming from a Mac. I'm giving you another download link. Otherwise, if there was no such a thing as a user agent string, I would have to show you the front page and then give you several links. If you're on Linux, click this. If you're on Windows, click that. Yeah, yeah. So but that. with this, I can eliminate those steps because it can be automated. 
Hello? All right. Um, let me figure something out. Yeah, I have a card. I'll be right there. Yeah, got it. Okay. Wow. Turns out one needs a card to get here. have to actually attend the second life thing. Right now? Oh, yeah, okay, let's take a short break. Uh, thing is good.